When is the last time you made s'mores? Crunchy, gooey, and with everyone's favorite, Hershey's Milk Chocolate. Whether you're making new memories with your friends beside a campfire, inviting neighbors over for a casual cookout, or cooking s'mores in the oven with your family on a rainy day, enjoy some more of each other with Hershey's S'mores. Find Hershey's Milk Chocolate Bars at your favorite retailer. Time to s'more some more. It's time for Friday Follies, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Sure, you've had a club sandwich, but have you tried the club on a sub from Firehouse Subs? It's time you tried the Firehouse take on a classic. Piled high with piping hot smoked turkey breast and honey ham, crispy bacon, melted Monterey Jack, and fresh veggies on a toasted sub roll. You've never had a club like this before. Avoid the wait. Tap the banner to order and prepay online to have your subs boxed, bagged, and ready for pickup or delivery. Previously on A Date with Death. I'm having dinner with Reggie Fister tomorrow night. The moments I have, I want to spend with you. Reggie, we've just met. Things can't move that quickly. A sister. Don't turn around. Just drive. <gasps> Nigel? I just know that Reggie shouldn't be alive, and that plane should have never gotten off the ground. The wounds, they were all flesh wounds. Don't trust him, Helen, whatever you do. Nigel Andrews might be working for the Germans. But why can't you just let this go? Wilbur, a lot more people will die. Based on the work of best-selling author Ace Collins, the Long Highway Players proudly present A Date with Death. Episode 6, Facing the Truth. Helen Meeker, Special Agent for the White House, has just returned from speaking with Wilbur Schellmeyer on death row. Back at her apartment, Helen is telling her partner, Henry Reese, about the visit. Glad you got back safe, Helen. Any success with Shelmaya? Nah. He's still willing to die to make sure his daughter lives. And he didn't tell me anything we don't already know. Well, I think I've got something. Do you tell? It seems our friend Nigel Andrews is missing. He was scheduled to go back to England today, and he wasn't at the embassy when he came to pick him up this morning. So Reggie was right about Nigel. Could be. But when I call my contacts at MI6, they wouldn't comment on whether he's passing information along to the Nazis. Right now, they just have him classified as AWOL. Keep it in a military matter, I guess. You know, Andrews called the prison yesterday and asked to talk to Schellmeyer. Schellmeyer didn't speak with him. Maybe he was trying to make sure the preacher kept quiet. Yeah, that's possible. Have you found any suspicious activity in any of the Zions around the country? Well, I have two more reports I'm waiting on, but they're long shots. Looks like we're going to have to draw a blank here. <sighs> Henry, we have to find that girl if we're going to convince Schellmeyer to tell us what he's hiding. Of course, Helen, but it, I mean, you talk about finding a needle in a haystack. I know. What about the preacher's notes? Anything there? Yes, we did get something. Uh, the man he was supposed to see in Mississippi is named Russell Strickland. They roomed together in college. Guy became a lawyer and worked a while at the attorney's general's office. He worked on the Gulfport and set up practice there about a decade ago. Great. Let's run him down. It's not that easy. Strickland is in England now, working with the OSS. He was too old for active service, so he's working for our intelligence sector. I sent cables to people in London. As soon as I find him, I'll set up the phone call. Hope they find him quickly. We don't have much time. Oh, yeah. One more thing. I assigned one of our agents to go through the records of every church while Shellmeyer's pastor. <laughs> yeah, he'll call you if he finds anything. Great. Thanks. Why don't you go home and get some sleep? We have a lot of digging to do in the next few days. It's only 8.30 p.m. and I'm usually up for a couple more hours, but I think I'll take you up on that. Good night, Henry. So long, Ellen. Okay, now what am I gonna... Just a minute! 
Who is it? Your future husband. Reggie? Good evening, Helen. I hoped you'd be in. Well, Reggie, a dozen red roses and a box of Godiva chocolates. What can you have on your mind? I probably shouldn't say. I don't want to get slapped before dinner. You owe me a dance or two, remember? Reggie, you have no idea how tired I am. Have you eaten yet? No. Well, a steak dinner should wipe that fatigue right out. Grab your coat, and after dinner, we'll kick up our heels. <laughs> Did anyone ever tell you you're crazy? Just about you, sweetheart. So, will you accept my invitation? How could I refuse? Let me just freshen up here. Oh, Reggie, I had so much fun tonight. Dinner, dancing, a walk in the park. The best date I've ever been on. I had a ball as well. But there's no reason for the fun to end here. After all, we don't know where we'll be next week. And not tonight, Reggie. You don't mean that, Helen. I know you don't mean that. Reggie, yes, you're right. I don't mean it. Let me open the door. There we are. Come inside. Reggie, I... I need to get that call. They wouldn't be calling at 2 a.m. if it wasn't important. But... Reggie, I had a better time tonight than you'll ever know. But this is getting in the way of something important that I have to do. Helen, nothing could be more important than you and me. Maybe the war started just to bring us together. I'm sorry, Reggie. Good night, Reggie. All right, Helen. Helen Meeker? Agent Collins here, ma'am. I know it's late, but Reese told me to call you if I found out anything about Schellmeyer's background. Yes. What do you have? Well, a couple of interesting things. Before Schellmeyer pastored in Newport... He was in a small community in New York called Germantown for about five years. I got a hold of the church records. It took me all night to read them. No doubt. Schellmeyer had a habit of recording everything. So what did you find? Well, about five years ago, a guy from England came over for the summer to assist the preacher. Guy from England? Let me guess. His name was Nigel Andrews? Bingo. <laughs> There's more. The year before Andrews came calling, Shellmeyer had another visitor from the UK, a foreign exchange student at local high school. He even stayed at the pastor's home. What's his connection to this case? Well, it could be nothing. But funny thing is, that same student was on the mission with Andrews in France. His name is Reggie Fister. Fister? Are you serious? Yes, ma'am. And after all that's been in the news, I was surprised to find out something the reporters missed. Fister was an orphan. <sighs> this thing gets more complicated all the time. You wanted to see me, Mr. President? Yes, Helen. Please come sit down. So... Fill me in on your two projects. Well, I have nothing new on Schellmeyer. I'm still certain he's not guilty, but I can't prove it. What I've gathered on the case is interesting, but not anything that would stand up in court. I hope we don't execute an innocent man. And your assignment with the Brit? It's two Brits now, sir. Andrews is AWOL and might be a spy. But the man who returned from the dead has been entertaining. Hmm, the British ambassador tells me Colonel Fister has taken quite a shine to you. No doubt about that. And how do you feel about him? I'm not sure. I like him a lot. But I don't know if I want to toss my heart into a relationship that probably won't go anywhere. My dad used to say that love is a marathon, not a sprint. But it's hard to take that wisdom to heart nowadays. Every moment seems so precious. I understand completely, Helen. By the way, Churchill is coming to the States this weekend. You may have heard. Yes, sir. Is the meeting still planned for the Grove Estate outside of Ithaca? That's right. 
The owners are longtime family friends. The farm is private and secure, and the house can accommodate everyone who'll be there. Also, the security detail will be minimal. We don't want to draw attention to the meetings. Your name is on the pass list if you'd like to come. I'll probably be busy with the Shellmeyer case. Well, no doubt, but even if you can't make it, Helen, I'd like a bit of information on what I can expect from Colonel Fister. He'll be coming along with Churchill, and I'll be visiting with him over dinner and during breaks. Well, he's rugged, charming, kind of a rogue. He doesn't have much of that English reserve we all talk about, and he's a bit more impulsive and outspoken than most Brits. I don't think many people would intimidate him, sir. Not even you. (laughs) Sounds like a Hollywood hero. Mm Mm-hmm. But with a better accent. (laughs) Helen, I do so hope you can make it up to see us. I'd love for you to meet Churchill. There's nobody like him. Well, Mr. President, if I haven't come up with anything to convince Schellmeyer to take back his confession by Monday, there'll be no reason to watch the clock tick down his final minutes. I pray it doesn't come to that. Be in touch, Helen. Roger Wilco, Mr. President. Hi, Sister Indica here, creator and star of Blazed All Our Lives. We've got the catfights of Dynasty, sassy humor of the Golden Girls, and the supernatural vibe of Charmed. Yes, we have witches, except they're like really stoned. If you love melodrama, comedy, and a splash of horror, check us out. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and we'll see you in Misty River. Hi, this is Ace Collins. I hope you're enjoying listening to the Long Highway Players production of my book, A Date with Death. If you'd like to find out more about the adventures of Helen Meeker, please check out all the novels that are a part of my In the President Service series at my website. That's www.acecollins.com. And you can purchase A Date with Death or any of the other 19 books in this series at Amazon in both print and ebook formats. Once again, thanks for tuning in and happy reading and happy listening. Helen goes from the White House to meet with Henry to discuss the Shellmeyer case. I hate to say it, Helen, but sometimes innocent people die. And we can't do anything about it, especially during a war. We may not be able to get the information we need to say Shellmeyer, but he's resigned to his fate. Maybe we should, too. Henry, Schallmeyer does not want to die. He just feels he has no choice. Well, whatever his reason is, he seems bound and determined to do it. Do you think Ellen is still alive? Because I do. I can feel it. She's out there, somewhere. I'm just afraid we're going to find her too late, and her father will have died for nothing. We all die for something, Helen. Look, I feel for the man and his family, but there's a larger issue here. What's that? How many people will die because of the information Shellmeyer is taking to his grave? Helen! Helen! Oh, look who's here. And how are we today? Ginger peachy, governor. See ya, Helen. What's wrong with him? I'm sure I don't know. Shall we go out? This is my last night in town. For once, I'd like to make Friday the 13th seem lucky. Sure. Wherever you want to go. After dinner and a stroll around Washington, Helen and Reggie return to her apartment. Thank you for inviting me back here, Helen. It was just what I hoped you'd do. Did I invite you back? I think you were the one who suggested it. Oh, nice place, Helen. Not large, but very tasteful. The sofa looks comfortable. like your bedroom even better. Wish I'd been here before now. I'll bet you do. Do we start out on the couch, or should we skip that step? You're pretty sure of yourself. This could be our last night together, Helen. Who knows if we'll ever meet again? We only have this moment, and we'll both regret it if we don't take advantage of it. Who will regret it more, you or me? Helen, there's no one in this world like you, and I think I'm pretty special too. I know we'd both miss something remarkable if we don't spend the rest of the night together. Why the hesitation? 
there's a lot going on right now. Forget Shelmaya for a few hours. Think of what we could enjoy. Reggie. Reggie. What? You need to go. Did, did I do something wrong? Without meaning to, you woke me up to what I need to be doing right now. This is not about you or me. It's about saving an innocent man's life. I couldn't live with myself if I stopped trying to do that, even for a few hours. And one night with you, no matter how tempting, isn't worth that guilt. Come on, Helen. I might never have another kiss or get another chance to love someone. This is war, remember? If all you need are lips and a body, Reggie, there are a lot of women out there who would be more than happy to give in to the charms of a hero. Find the one that appeals to you the most. She'll take you wherever you want to go. But I'm not going to be her. You're making a mistake, Helen. You're going to regret this. Reggie, you're handsome, charming, and you earned the title of hero. But the fact remains, for you, I'm just a conquest. <laughs> you actually believe that you have more value than I do. Remember? You asked me to forget my job and put you first. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Because I'm a woman, you might see me as second rate. But in my mind, I'm your equal. You want your dreams about me to come true? Start treating me as if I'm every bit as important as you think you are. So, so if I don't, we'll never see each other again? Well, I can guarantee you won't be seeing any more of me tonight. Thank you for a lovely evening. Good night, Helen. Don't think I'm going to get much sleep tonight. Where did I put that summoner? <gasps> Just what I need. This better not be the wrong number. It's not, but you might wish it were. Henry, what's up? We're out of Zions. I've checked every single one in the U.S. We didn't find a thing. No missing kids, no connections to Shellmeyer, nothing. I don't know what we could do that we haven't already done. <sighs> We're missing something. Sure, but what is it? How do we find it? I don't know. I think I'll attend the Methodist Church down the street tomorrow morning. But I need to put things in perspective, and I can't do it on my own. Going to church is about the only thing I haven't tried. Could you pick me up there around noon? I'm just going to walk and leave my car here. Sure, I'll see you then. Good night, Henry. I'm trying so hard here. There's a man who's going to die tomorrow for no reason, and I can't find a way to help him. I'm so confused about what to do. He doesn't deserve this, Lord. Please, Lord, show me what I can do to save this man and his family. Miss, are you all right? My name is George Miles. I'm one of the pastors here. You look a bit troubled. Do you need prayer? No. More like a miracle. <laughs> Those still happen sometimes, too. What can you tell me about Zion? Well, we sing about Zion in hymns. It's mentioned in the Bible, and I've preached on it a couple of times. What exactly are you looking for? What does the word mean to you as a preacher? For most Christians today, Zion means heaven. But the early believers used it to refer to Jerusalem. I'm a scholar, so that's how I tend to think of Zion. Does that help? It probably should, but I have no idea how it's supposed to fit in the larger puzzle. I'm sure it'll come to you in time. That's just it, Mr. Miles. Time is the one thing I don't have. Well, how's the service, Helen? I honestly have no idea, Henry. My mind was so much on the case, I couldn't even tell you what the sermon was about or what the hymns were. I'm still trying to figure out the code at the grave. Maybe it wasn't a code. Maybe Shomai was just spouting a few random words before he gave that warning not to open a coffin. You may be right. Is there any other news on the case? Well, as of right now, Andrews is still missing. And the Brits have asked the FBI to help find them. 
We've issued in all points from coast to coast. Even the Canadian Royal Mountain Police are involved. You can't hide forever. Oh yeah, there's a file on uh, Fister in the back seat. When I stopped at the office, I ran into Collins. Uh, he just finished writing it up. I told him I'd give it to you. Did you look through this? I wanted to, but Fister's none of my business. Neither is what you do with him, by the way. Truth be told, Henry, the story of what we did isn't much of a story. He wanted more than I could give him. You mean that? What stopped you from uh, giving it to him? I had a choice to make. Either I give in to him, or I give all I have to this case. I couldn't go both ways. That says a lot about you, Helen. Shellmeyer is probably going to die, and there's nothing we can do about it. But if I gave up trying to save him, just to indulge in something that could be saved for another time and place, what would that say about me? I can't say I disagree with your reasoning. So, what's the file say about Fiska? Well, he was orphaned when he was a kid. Spent a year in the U.S. as an exchange student. Studied in Austria for a bit. Came back to London and joined the service. By the time Britain declared war, he was an officer. Sounds like he was setting himself up to be a perfect English hero. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. How about you take me out to eat? Maybe to a diner with some kind of greasy food? <laughs> I know just the place. Helen has returned to her apartment following lunch with Henry. Hey, sis. How are you doing, kid? Great. Best semester ever. Does that mean you found a boyfriend? <laughs> hey, it was you who told me not to settle down yet. But yeah, I've had a few dates. Good. I want you to have fun. How are your grades? No problems there at all. How are you doing? <sighs> I've got a difficult case right now. I just can't get a good grasp on it. I feel like the answer is right in front of me, but I can't see it. I'm sure you'll figure it out. You always do. Maybe not this time. Hey, you found me, remember? Everyone thought I was dead but you. You knew I was alive. Call it sisterly intuition. I just felt like you were. You know, one of my professors says that life is a pilgrimage. We just have to keep going until we find out where we're supposed to be. So you have to keep going, too. <laughs> well, that's a bit too vague for me. Besides, I've got less than a day to complete this pilgrimage. After that, it won't matter. Well, maybe you're not following the right map. The world's top destinations for pilgrimages are Mecca and Jerusalem. Maybe you should try going to one of those places instead of wherever you're stuck now. Why not? I'm certainly not having any luck with the map. I'm... <gasps> Jerusalem! Allison, you might just be brilliant. What do you mean, just might? I love you, but I've got to go. I think you just gave me the clue I needed. I don't know what I did, but I'm glad I could help. I'll talk to you later. Good night, kid. Love you. Love you, Helen. Jerusalem it shall be. Henry Reese. Henry, I think I know what city Ellen Schellmeyer is in. Can you leave with me tonight? No can do. Uh, Nigel Andrews was just seen in Baltimore. I'm leaving for there right now. <sighs> Rats. Okay, I'll just go there myself. Go where? Zion. Heaven? No, the city of David. Bethlehem? No, Jerusalem. Uh, you going to the place where Jesus died? A little closer than that. Jerusalem, New York. Sounds like a long shot, Helen. It is, but it's the only shot I've got. Well, be careful. And call in backups. Don't try to do this alone. I will, Henry. I will. Right now I need to pack a bag, get a bath, put on some clean clothes, and go. I'm heading off on an all-night pilgrimage. A Date with Death is based on the Ace Collins novella series, In the President's Service. Our story was adapted for podcasts by Michael Messner, who also directed this production. Performers included Andrew Sargent, Art Shingler, Gary Klassen, Jennifer Francis, Lance Rodriguez, Laura Brent, Lindsay Morgan, Max Sullivan, Michael Tucker, Nancy Messner, Nicole Player, Riley Hunsaker, Rocky Jacobs, and Sean Small. Also appearing were the author and the director. Music by Alex Productions, Creative Commons. This is Rachel Miller.
Thank you for listening. Hey, listener, are you thinking of starting a podcast? Acast has everything you need to get your idea out of your head and into people's ears. Record and edit your episodes with our Podcastle integration and seamlessly publish your show to Acast to reach millions of listeners all over the world. And the best part? It's completely free. Get started today at Acast.com. A-S-T.com. This is Thursday Thrillers, audio with action on the Mutual Audio Network. Join us tomorrow on Mutual with Friday Follies, the end of the week collection of comedy cut-ups. You can subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for every day of audio drama that fits your fancy. Or find the Friday Follies feed in your favorite podcast players. Now that's a lot of effus. This is the Mutual Audio Network where we listen and imagine together.